Here with Steve Asmussen at the Oklahoma Training Track. Steve, you have Epicenter going today. I got to ask, what did you guys learn out of that uh, Jim Dandy race? Well, that he likes the Saratoga surface. You know, that was the one variable that we were, you know, he's obviously a quality three-year-old, kept very good company all year. And uh, it was great to see him run what we felt was his most visually impressive race over the Saratoga surface. Ideally, in today's race, you know, there's there's a little bit of a, uh, maybe a rabbit, a little speed horse in it. Ideally, where would you like to epi see Epicenter during this race? Just clean. You know what I mean? Just break cleanly, have a nice smooth trip, and uh, let him be who he is. Let them make the adjustments around him. Good luck in today's Travers. Thank you very much. With Jose Ortiz at the Oklahoma training track. Jose, we just spoke to your brother. He told me about how he became a jockey. You know, he said he made the first move and you came right after him in jockey school. What was that decision? Did you, you see your brother and you, you wanted it or did you want this your entire life? Yeah, Ida was one year older than me, so he was allowed to enter to the school before me. So, I mean, I wanted to do it, but I was playing baseball at the time, so I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with my life. And, and when Ida went in, I started going with him a couple of days and I really liked it. I fell in love with it. and. Uh, and then I signed up for the school the next year. In terms of riding, you came here, you know, what was the race that really got you going? Your, your win that you said, wow, I'm a top jockey now and I'm gonna start getting a lot better mounts. I read, spoke to about his first grade one. What was yours? I think the same. The first grade one is show people that you can win those kind of races. Uh, was here on my first year of Saratoga, I came. My buck boy year, I didn't grow because I was hurt. Then I rode 2013 and I won the hopeful for Lucas Strong Monday. You're a jockey family. You are married to a previous jockey. You know, talk to me a little about what the dynamics are. Is, is there anything at home where she said, oh, you should have done this on the ride? Do you, do you talk about it or, or do you leave that in the jockey's room? Not at all, no. She don't talk about races. She barely watch them, so. Uh, <laughs> I wish she watched it more, you know. Sometimes I win four, three races and she don't even know, you know, it's weird. But uh, she's busy with the kids and uh, I mean, as long as she's happy, I don't care. <laughs> I see her galloping horses in the morning for Linda. Yeah. Um, what is that support system for you? It seems like she is so, she's at the races some days and she's such a support system. She brings the kids and, and they're so happy to see you ride. Yeah. You know, talk to me a little about what that support system like at home. It's great to have her understand the game as much as she does. I mean, she rode and she knows the inside, mm -hmm. you know, what we got to go through in the morning and the afternoons, uh, you know, diets and stuff. Like she understand everything and that's a plus for me. And she's a great supporter of me and my career. And at the house too, you know, it's hard with three kids and she got to spend most of the time with them. Uh, but she understands, that's good for me. In terms of this weekend, you have, a, you have a couple good mounts. What's the horse that you're really looking forward to riding? All of them. I, 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 love, I love my program on Saturday, you know, I ride very nice horses. I ride Jack Christopher, early voting, uh, technical analysis. Uh, I mean, that's a tough, tough, yeah. tough, tough to pick out of those. Yeah. In terms of Jack Christopher cutting back now, um, you rode last time. Talk to me a little about that cutback. Is this something that you were you were talking about? You were influential in? No, he always been a sprinter. Mm -hmm. I mean, we tried to, to stretch him out in the Haskell, and I think he ran a very good race, honestly. Got beat by two nice horses, and, you know, it was a first time for him going around two turns, and I think he did great. He relaxed well, and he finished well. And I think uh, the cup back is gonna be huge for him. I think that's what he wants, you know, seven full on to a mile, that's his preferred distance. Last question for your early voting. Um, that Preakness, amazing. I mean, it's just, you, it seems like you studied so much in the program and understood exactly where everybody else was gonna be. And it was sort of spot on. Uh, people thought you'd be a little more forward, but really it was perfect. The race ran exactly how it should have been run on on if you handicapped it. Talk to people about what what goes into that decision when you're prepping for a race. What goes into watching film? Is it best performances? How do you get yourself mentally prepared for each race? 
Well, I mean, I watch films, like you say before, and then I look at the program and see the main contenders. And you can't forget about the launch shot because sometimes, like in the Preakness, we had a launch shot that drew in late that had speed, that was Armagnac. And I was very confident I can rate my horse because in the morning we've been working on him. Chad, Chad did a great job. He let me just sit off a, a horse for a few times in the mornings and I knew that he could do it. I knew he can sit off next to a horse and relax and turn off. And that's what he did on the Preakness. Every, everybody thought that he was a horse that needed to be on the lead, but I knew I could sit next to a horse and he would turn off and he did beautifully. I think it was a little unlucky for Epicenter, you know, he got a little problem in the first 16 of a mile, he had to check. But I think my horse run a very good race and they can take that away from him. Well, congratulations on that Preakness win this year and good luck on this Traverse weekend. Jose Ortiz at the Saratoga training track. Here at Barn 57th Ray Handle, you have a 3-2 zone going today uh, in the forego. Why here? Why'd you pick this spot? Well, you know, we won, we knocked out the 3X condition for him. There wasn't really a whole lot of other options. And I like the 7 eighths distance for him. Um, and, you know, I was maybe hoping we wouldn't run into Jackie's Warrior when we initially targeted this race. But, you know, he's in great form and um, he loves the track here. Just figured we'd take a shot. When you come into a race like this where you do have a Jackie's Warrior, mm -hmm. you know, some people say, I believe I read an article that said it was a... Uh, a once in a lifetime type of horse at seven furlongs. When you come into it, what do you feel? How do you how do you race against something like that? You know, we're just going to go in there and run our race. You know, break and get him in a comfortable position and come with the run, and you know, hopefully get a nice clean trip. And wherever he finishes is where he finishes. And we're playing with house money right now. You know, we we knocked out the two X. Um, we had second and three X at the end of the Belmont meet. Come here, they got the win at Saratoga already. So, you know, listen, anything else after that's just icing on the cake. The horse clearly likes the track here. Mm -hmm. How's the horse been training the last couple of weeks? Phenomenal. So, you know, I think he's going to run a big race today. And wherever that puts him is where it puts him. Well, good luck today. And good luck in today's forego. Thank you. Appreciate it.